I have never been uh, more optimistic. I have never been uh, more hopeful about the future of our country than I am at this moment because every campaign is more than just about a person. It's not just about Bill Clinton or Hillary Clinton or Ted Strickland or Sherrod Brown or Barack Obama. It's about what they stand for. Politics to some people is a game of capture the flag. And it's a game. And for those people, uh, I understand why they're in it, but that's not me. And that's not the people I just mentioned. For me, politics is a way to make progress in the world, and if you separate politics from government, you don't get that. You have to be political. You have a responsibility to be political, to make change. There are some people who say, well, I like government and I like policy, but I don't like politics. And there's some people who say, I like politics, I don't like my government policy. I would argue neither of those people get it. That if you honestly, truly want to make a difference in this world, then politics and government are 24-7. They're not just an occasional Tuesday in an occasional year. And you get that. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here in what might be considered an off-election year on a Saturday. So I know that I'm speaking to the choir. But I actually believe that the future of America is not uh, those of us who get elected. It's those of us who depend on you to keep our feet to the fire, to remember why we got in this, and to make sure that we stay true to our values. And that we appreciate not only your support, but even your constructive criticism. That's why I'm in this business. I know it's why most of my colleagues are in this business. One of the best and proudest days of my life was when Ted Strickland called me back in December of 2005. I had been serving as the president and CEO of the Center for Families and Children in Cleveland for seven years. And honestly, I didn't know whether I'd ever get back into public service on an elected basis. I knew I'd be in public service again somehow, but I didn't know if I'd ever run. I'd served in the state legislature for 10 years. I was attorney general. I'd run for, for governor in 1998 against a guy by the name of Bob Taft, who at that time had no record to attack and who had a 100-year head start on neighborhood. It was the closest governor's race in 30 years, in fact, more than 30 years now, still holds the record going back to the 70s. But I lost. And I had two choices, engage in deep self-pity or decide what I was going to do. So my law firm calls me up and says, we want you back as a partner. And I go into my uh, law firm, and they give me this beautiful corner office. And I'm looking over Gund Arena and Jacobs Field. For those of you from Cleveland, you know what those landmarks are. And here's the good news and the bad news. The good news is it was a beautiful view. And the bad news is that was the highlight of my day. <laughs> and I realized I didn't want to practice law anymore. So I went to my partners and I said, you know what, you've had been wonderful to me, and I'll make much more money here, I'm sure, than I would do in something else, but this isn't what, who I am and what I'm about. So I think I need to go look for something else. And they said, well, we're sorry to hear that, but go do it. And I applied for the presidency and CEO of one of the largest nonprofits in the Midwest called the Center for Families and Children that works with uh, early childhood education, after school programs, mental health, a uh, nationally known fathering program. And during my 10 years in the legislature, my signature issue was children. That's what I really focused on. And my four years as Attorney General, I focused more on consumer rights uh, and law enforcement and a variety of legal issues, but in my heart was always working on children's issues. So I applied. I was an unorthodox candidate, uh, but I, I got selected. And those were some of the best years of my entire life making a difference. But each of us trying to make a difference in different ways. And for me, the ideal way to make a difference is to make a difference that's sort of broad and deep. And at the Center for Families and Children, I was unquestionably, I think, with my colleagues making a difference that was deep. 
but it was, in the scheme of things, narrow. It wasn't broad. And when Ted Strickland called me, that fire in the belly for public service got reignited in moments. And he said, Lee, would you come back and be my running mate? And I did. And these last three years, one on the campaign trail and two as Ted's lieutenant governor and director of development, have been among the most fulfilling of my life, even more perhaps than that Center for Families and Children and Attorney General, the State Senate, and the State House. Why? Well, for two reasons. One, because I get to partner with somebody who's not just a close friend, but I think one of the great leaders in the country today. Somebody who's genuine, who's comfortable in his own skin, who stays true to his values, and is willing to take risks and be bold, even when people disagree. And the second reason, Ted's given me the responsibility to be the point person in our administration on jobs and economic development, and I live and breathe it. There isn't a day, there's not a moment that I'm not focusing on turning our economy around. Now, none of us expected that there would be a global economic crisis that would meet us head on halfway through our term. But I tell you that Ted and I are relentlessly optimistic. We are relentlessly optimistic, not because we're Pollyannish and we pretend that these problems aren't problems. They're serious. You know, we're projecting right now a state deficit of $7.3 billion, largest deficit in the history of our country, and it is virtually more than 90% due to what's happened because of the ditch that the Bush administration dug for eight oh, consecutive years. I think we're at a moment in history where Roots Camp and what we do is something that people will read about years from now. So I want to thank you for what you do and who you are and the fact that you are activists in every sense of the word. And even though we may occasionally disagree on the means, I think we all agree on the end. And that is that a world that is peaceful, that is true to those who have less, and that focuses on taking bold risks because as Wayne Gretzky once said when he was asked what makes him a great hockey player, he said, I just learned how to skate where the puck was going, not where the puck is. And that's what we're doing today. Thank you. Thank you.